I have this like weird, crazy obsession with ordering lingerie and sex toys because of our distance and because of the bond that we have. Like I'm able to go like right there, like envisioning my wife wearing this like, fuck, my wife would look super hot in this. I think what men don't do is like order that shit. I don't think men take the initiative to do things like that. Like that makes your woman feel sexy. You know, that makes your woman feel wanted because it's so easy to get people to shut down if you're like hey i want to try this and the other person's like no <laughs> you know <laughs> welcome to louder the podcast that amplifies your voice i'm sean p your host and here we believe in giving everyone a platform to get louder whether it's your professional journey or personal stories we encourage our guests to speak up on topics they couldn't voice before Join us as we make waves, elevate conversations, and empower you to be heard. Let's get louder together. Hey guys, welcome. So I've got Justin and Felicia on today, and I want to take a quick second for them to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about who they are and where they've come from. Uh, take it away, guys. Welcome. I'm Justin Cruz, um, my wife, Felicia. We're both from a place called Davenport, Iowa. It's kind of the armpit of the Mississippi. Got it. Um, both grew up there, met about 10 years ago, uh, back when we both drank a lot more and were into that whole kind of life. Um, she was a bartender, and that I was persistent. Nice. <laughs> and persistent. Uh, <laughs> so you guys met there before you moved to Vegas? Yep. Okay. Um, we went to school together, but never really knew each other. He came in the bar with a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, it's an easy way in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so I just, I didn't give up. She didn't like me at first and I had to sell her on me and it worked. <laughs> so Cool. How long have you guys been married now? We've been married, what, two, two years? Oh, cool. Two and a so, half. Yeah. We've been, been together for now? 10, but married like two and a half. Got it. So that's about the same time that we've been married. So we're kind of new to this whole thing as well so yeah. this should be fun so anybody that's thinking of getting married just married or even in a relationship you guys need to stay tuned this is going to be good we're going to talk about real shit um real communication things that we really do in our relationship to keep things fun spicy interesting and um you know certain things like expectations that we probably have for our spouse that are met and allows us to be happy and have a good flourishing relationship. So Felicia, tell us a little bit about you. Um, well, he, he kind of nailed the background, I guess. Um, I was doing personal training for a while. I just switched into accounting and then kind of helping him with real estate more than anything. Yeah. Um, so do you guys work it. a lot we, together? Yeah. Yeah. We're together like most of the time. Yeah. It's, and we've, before we moved here, we actually worked at the same place oh, yeah, as well yeah. we we're we we're employed by the same people for probably like a year there um yeah that's something that's never really been hard for us we complement each other pretty well even professionally wow um it took a while to get there though i mean think of 10 years you know what i mean like yeah. it, it took at least five of those years to be able to work together and be together all the time without like wanting to yeah. strangle each other you know <laughs> that's that's pretty refreshing to hear so i have my wife's soul here as well so we are kind of like new into blending and figuring out because she so is a hairstylist. So she has her own gig going on mm -hmm. and she's already built her success with that. So she has full momentum with that. And then I do what I do. But with what you and I do being in real estate, like there's so many different opportunities all over the place that if a couple can complement each other, like yeah. it makes certain aspects so much easier. And quite frankly, the other person is kind of hearing and dealing with the troubles anyway. So mm -hmm. it's like, how can we blend this? And we're, I'd say we're having a difficult time figuring out because we're kind of in that stage figuring out like what can organically be the roles that, right. that she, almost that she Even can I step can into, yeah. you know, because I already have this machine running and, and it's your hard. businesses are very different. Yeah. Super different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then to what you're talking about, you know, you, if you talk to your wife like an employee, <laughs> yeah, that oh, doesn't work out. I don't like that. You know, at all. and then you know it's it's <laughs> don't like it. it is a little easier probably to get frustrated because you have this higher expectation of this person. You know, yep. so yep. yeah, ten years. Okay, so we got like eight <laughs> left. <laughs> it's it's eight, eight, yeah. But it's like five, so we have about three years to figure <laughs> this out. Cool. Cool. We have time. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, guys. So here's what we're gonna do today. I've got ten questions. 
all right here, right? Random, and random, questions. random. I mean, I'm looking at four, eight, two, one, nine. I don't even know what they are. So rather than me just kind of like having the hot mic here and asking all these questions like I'm some love doctor, which I'm not, um, <laughs> I think we're just going to pass them out and just wing it. But cool. they're all really fun questions. So who wants to go first? Raise your hand. You. Me? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to volunteer. All right. So I'll close my eyes <laughs> and I'm going to pick. I don't even know which one this is. And then are we picking who gets who I get to ask the question to or should we start with our spouse and then move on? Whatever. Okay, we'll Whatever start with spouse want. and then move on. <laughs> okay. Doesn't All right. Matter. Oh, dang. I got question number 1. So, okay. okay. So, the question is, how do you and your spouse navigate intimacy and maintain a healthy and fulfilling sex life? So, I'm going to pass this over to you guys so you remember the question. How do you and your spouse navigate intimacy and maintain a healthy and fulfilling sex life? Oh my God, this is going to be embarrassing for my girls to, to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girls. But, um, well, I, I feel like a lot of communication, especially lately, we've been talking a lot about expectations, especially you, because of the distance that we have. So the time that we're together, it's, it's super important of making the best of that time. So I think... <laughs> just talking about it like I expect it every day expect I, what having sex I want when I'm with you I want to have sex every day you know and sometimes it just doesn't happen so communicating that like maybe not right now but maybe later that has helped because before I think I would feel more rejected more like okay this is this isn't fair to me if this is what I want but maybe right now it's not the time so just communicating that it's not that I don't want to just like maybe not right now. So it's creating this bond and more I'm trusting you versus like now questioning myself. So I think that's been big for me. Okay. And us talking about it and flirting throughout the day for sure. So flirting is pretty important. Yeah. But I mean, I'm naturally a flirty person. So now I get my own gorilla that I get, get to <laughs> flirt with all the time. Like, heck yeah, dude, I have this hot dude that I get to flirt all the time and I, it can go somewhere. Yeah. Every day. Okay. The yeah. end? Yeah, the end. Okay. <laughs> the end. So I'll go then here. Oh, okay. So then you can ask me and then we'll and then we'll pass it over. So um, how do you and your spouse navigate intimacy and maintain healthy and fulfilling sex life? So a couple of things for me. This um, and I've actually been waiting to confess oh, this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, yeah. <laughs> I have this like weird, crazy obsession with ordering lingerie and sex toys i don't know like it started with us being apart <laughs> right <laughs> it started with us being apart and i would just you know obviously like lust over my wife like i couldn't wait to see her right and so then i would start to if you were to go on my instagram i'll just say that it probably looks like a female's instagram because there's lingerie and shit all over the place right <laughs> But I look at this shit and she's asked me like, well, when you see it, do you ever like look at these females and kind of like think of them? And I mean, obviously these females are modeling this lingerie for a reason, right? It, it, they're good looking, but no, like my mind, because of our distance and because of the bond that we have, like I'm able to go like right there, like envisioning my wife wearing this, like, fuck, my wife would look super hot in this. And so I think what men don't do is like order that shit. Mm -hmm. get it what why what if you were to ask i would imagine if you lined up five dudes and you were say like hey what size is your wife most probably would not even know that you know right. and there's really only like four sizes right you know <laughs> so really you know and it fluctuates between two right small medium yeah you know so i guess if you're within that range it makes it easier but yeah so i don't think men take the initiative to do things like that like that makes your woman feel sexy you know that makes your woman feel wanted and so th between that and then just sex toys like opening up a a world that's like you're the other person if you can both feel comfortable mm -hmm. in allowing like one another to feel comfortable in that space because it's so easy to get people to shut down if you're like hey i want to try this and the other person's like 
no <laughs> you know and you're like okay cool like maybe some, you don't have to be into everything but like that answer like let's let's kind of like try and clean that up a little bit right. you know so those are two things for me that i've done that continue to keep our intimacy in our sex life i think um pretty spicy and so i've been pretty receptive of it <laughs> yeah so i think that's that's helped i'll let you take it first let me to go first yep. um i will say i'm like you I kind of want it every day and expect it every day kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I have a harder time, like, even wanting it every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would say we're very we're very consistent, um, but it's definitely me that needs it more, um, which kind of like what you were saying, too. It's like sometimes her response is not necessarily it's not that I don't want it today, but not right now. Yeah. And like me, it's just like. It's balls so are, easy when you're blue, bro. Like, <laughs> and like, the I issue. need to release this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I will feel. I'll leave Help you alone. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and real. the issue is like, I don't really want it, but like, then I feel bad not giving it. Right. Like, yeah. so it's like an emotional like, I don't know. Well, it's easy when you are married too. That like, this this lady last night. I was in bed and she comes and jumps on me and I was just like, okay, well, I actually I mean, jump on you. You jumped on me. And I was like, ah, I just, dude, I was tired. And so like my point to this is like when you're married, like there's a lot of things like you could have just eaten something and you're like, I just don't feel like, you know, I'm not going to fart when, you know, (laughs) we're doing this, you know, like I'm just not feeling it right now, but let's get into this, you know? So, and to that point as well, like if you look at all of us, clearly we take care of ourselves and that's an expectation. And I just wanted to get this out of the way because it's an important thing that I, that people really need to grasp, grasp onto this. I have a certain expectation of my wife, not in a way that like, I'm not an asshole. Like, you know, so saying this, it's not like, I'm like, you better be this or else I'm going to go fuck around or go do, Mm -hmm. you know, cheat on you. But my wife understands like expectations that I have of her, but it goes both ways. Like I work out daily, I take care of myself and that's for her as well. And yeah, I mean, nor would you expect her to be attracted to you if you know, you got all doughy and head man titties, right? you know, like it goes both ways for sure. And Her and I have talked about that too. Like it's not that you would necessarily leave one another, but there is that, let that baseline level of, expectation i guess that you're both going to take care of yourself yeah so many people um, in marriage lose that too bro they have you'll kids see one of them loses it and right. the other one keeps with it but one of them loses it yeah and that's you know Doesn't that's it not come really back a person to, you married it comes back to your values though like if you value 100%. health right. you totally. both should value health like you know yeah. i mean that's well, going to play a huge role in what you do totally. as people individually and together yeah. yeah, and I don't even take it offensive because before I even met him, I've been a gym rat since I was 15 years old. So it's not like you're asking me something outrageous. Like, right. I expect that of myself. That's part of you what know, probably attracted you to to each other. Exactly. You know? so, I mean, exactly. It's kind of like a lifelong accountability yeah. partner, really. Yeah. 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 That's something her and I have definitely grown with. Um, but we were both, I was 23, she was 24 when we started dating. I had been working out for a couple, you know, six months maybe at the time. Um, and I mean, she had here and there, but that was something that we've definitely made our lifestyle since then. Yeah. Um, and that's that's one of the things that's really helped us grow together, too, and become more attracted to each other as, you know, the years have gone on. Like our relationships much better in year 10 than it was in one or two, you know, and I feel like if you are both willing to put in the work and want to improve yourself consistently, why wouldn't your relationship get better with time? Yeah, yeah you know? of course. It allows, there's, even when you're married, you're still allowed to have your own personal space and time to yourself as well. And right. if you're gonna do that for yourself and take care of yourself, it shows the other person that like, I still care about myself. I And, and it yeah. allows you also to, here's an interesting question. Do you guys work out together? No, I like my own time Same. at the gym by myself. I like working out with her. She doesn't like working it. out with I me. I hate it. So, so far, you guys like are gym. more in line. We don't either. I, I, I don't even like a gym partner. He likes working out with other dudes. Like, yeah, I, 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 I just, yeah. me, you put yeah. your headphones yes. on. 
This guy, <laughs> he just, he takes forever in between. It just, his workouts are just really just long. Well, he's, in the he's morning, on the phone. He's you gotta working. take a poop in the middle sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I'm like, let's go. Let's do this. I gotta go. I have an yeah. hour and a half that I wanna just like get it in. I don't wanna talk. I don't wanna like, be on, waiting for you, you have on it the planned phone. out to the point where I know how long it's going to take me yes. to do this workout. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've come to the point where, like, <laughs> even if we go at the same time, we'll legitimately like drive separately. <laughs> for well, real, it takes forever. Like, I wake up in the morning, I have my routine, I take my pre workout, and like from that moment, I have thirty minutes till I know I need to I need to get it out. So and this guy, he's like, well. I gotta go to the bathroom first. I'm like, dude, that's gonna take like another 30 <laughs> minutes. Too. I'm out. Gotta drink some coffee. <laughs> See you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of that is in line with like, okay, so should we continue, should we fight about this and ruin our each and every morning when we're going right. to do a positive thing? Or should we quickly just find a solution and be okay yep. with it and like, hey, okay, cool, we'll go separately and we'll move on with our day. So that's kind of like what we've done and it seems to work. So you guys, you guys go to the gym at the same time generally, well, but drive separate and then don't work I, out together I go either. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just yeah. in the same place. Still yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know her. That was how we used to be too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hate waiting. I almost left him this morning too. He was just taking forever. I'm like, well, whatever. So some some days, like leg days, like I don't mind working out with her on leg days because it's fun to look at, and I kick his ass. I don't like, yeah. And she's actually stronger than me on that, so I don't have to move as much weights when we're working out. So, <laughs> all right. So, Felicia, I'm gonna let you go next. Pick one. You sure yeah. there's not one you want me to pick? Cause I feel like you picked that first one on purpose. I know, right? <laughs> it was meant to be. I got two. You got I two didn't get like one, two. <laughs> you there's two on there. Like better. number two. Oh, oh, number two. You got number, oh, two. number oh, okay. two. Okay, cool. Okay. That's crazy. I thought I shuffled these. I'm all. Okay. Can you share some practical tips for incorporating everyday activities to strengthen the bond in your marriage? Besides the gym. But yeah, besides that, we already covered the gym. Yeah. yeah. Um, so am I giving this question to somebody? Is that whichever? What like if you want to okay. ask him or if you want to answer it yourself first, whichever. I probably would have answered the last one first since it came back to me anyways. So it's your answer your and then, yeah. Okay. Um, I need a time to thank you. Got anything? <laughs> and all this gets edited out, so don't even worry about it. Like, no. you could think you about it. You don't have to edit it. You can put me thinking. I don't, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. This is me. I told you I was winging it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess this kind of comes down to, it's going to come down to your interests and, what you like doing together. Um, What's hard for me is we spend a lot of time together as it is. So it's like, we're constantly just, we would rather be that, together than apart. So even if it's going to the grocery store, like I really don't like doing that stuff, but I'll go. You I know prefer what I mean? he goes to or Costco like, with me because weird things happen when he doesn't. <laughs> don't, <laughs> going to Costco, like not really something I like doing, but I'll, you know, like I'd rather, I'd rather just go with her and hang out with her than not. Yeah. You know, if I have the time, I'll do it. Or like, um, I'll go to the office with him, even though I work from home. Like, I'll go to the office with him for the day just because. To hang out. Yeah. yeah. And so. even you know, even if we don't talk very much, like, we just like being around each other. So um, trying to find, like, good. the everyday normal things that you would do and just kind yeah. of blending in with it and being okay with, like, just rolling. Like, all right, let's go. Yeah. I mean, think of I, I, how many things you can do together that you do on a daily basis anyways. Chores around the house, you run errands, you know what I mean? Like you can do all that stuff. Things. It's just finding the time for it and She's a passenger out. princess and rarely drives. Oh God, I love it when he drives. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I would usually that. just drive her anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So with that, are you a good co pilot? Like will you just like jump ahead and be like, hey, I got the directions. I know where we're going. Yep. Here's the music. Here's the this. Here's I don't do the music because he won't let me do that. Okay. He don't like Fair enough. Music. Yeah. Fair enough. But <laughs> Yeah, okay. usually, yeah. So usually I'll feed him, good. you know, yep. I'll make sure there's drinks and snacks. Figuring in the out car. where we're stopping next. <laughs> Plan okay. out the route. Yep. Nice. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Well, that all makes that sense. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So finding finding joy in like everyday tasks, I think, is is super important when you're married. Because it's there like are an overall thing, like yeah. in life, right? If you gotta you gotta enjoy the little things. We we do a lot of things throughout the day that we don't enjoy. Yeah. But if you look at the negative side of it as a chore instead of like getting the positive side of enjoying it either with somebody or just in the fact of doing it, like the yeah. same thing with working out. Most people find that a, a chore. 
I mean, I hate to go back to that, but really they, they find it a chore and instead of enjoying it and realizing it, that it's, you know, a good part of your day, you leave energetic, you know what I mean? Instead of, oh, I gotta go do that again. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So. That makes complete sense, complete sense. I love it, that was a really good answer for sure. How do you handle disagreements or arguments within your marriage? And what advice would you give to other couples for resolving conflicts constructively? That's a good one. It um, is a good one. Knowing how your partner communicates is the most important thing and something that even after 10 years, I'm not the greatest at. Yeah. Um, I like to hash things out right away. I want to talk about it. I want to solve the problem. That's not always the way that she wants to communicate or solve the problem. So I've had to learn and it still takes a lot for me to just resist and give her her time and her space. I want to solve it and fix it right now. She wants to think about it and maybe come back to it later. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> I, ha I have a very hard time with like having a disagreement or an argument and not solving the issue, whatever the issue was, just because I don't had want one that. last night and he followed me upstairs. I don't want it, I don't want <laughs> it to happen again. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that I'm like angry or anything like that. Yeah, like, course. I just want to talk like I just want to figure out what either I did or what the problem is. So yeah. I know how to pre either prevent or fix this. I think guys That's are more about solutions and we need a process for exactly. a little while. Yeah. And, and, my, and I know okay. that yeah. I have to but even just figure out my emotions before I can respond. Like I, I get so built up and yeah. things that I have to process that before I can even tell him what's wrong. Cause I don't even know at the moment. I, I love hearing all of this cause it's so like constructive for so many people that are listening to this. Like from what you're saying, what I'm hearing is you want to identify how you're feeling before you dive into it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I hear from Justin, which is very much in line with myself. Like, Hey, what, this is easy for me. What's the solution? Let's get past this. Right. right? I'm not even really in the emotion part. I'm right. just looking at solutions and what, right. like just the problem. Think, what, did I, what did I say or do that created this response? So I yeah. don't do that again. Whereas yeah. we have you more know. emotion that we have to work through before yeah. we can get to that. And I, yeah. I know that. And it's still hard. Like, because just because, well, like, I don't, I, I, I do not like arguing or fighting. I, I don't. Well, we rarely that, do it. It's something I. I well, just and try his to mom avoid. used to make him sit down and talk things through. Yeah. Mine did not. My family yeah. was not like that. You bottled things up. You, you know what I mean? Mm. Like the processes that we grew up with were totally different. Yeah. yeah. So I think with, with what you're saying, like, there's a lot of trust that we have to get from the other person mm -hmm. in order for us to actually do that. Cause I need to trust that if I'm going to let you go right now, that we're going to come back to this. Right. You know, and as we build that trust, it allows me to be like, okay, how much time do you need? Right. Okay, cool. Like we're going to come back to this. And that's difficult because you don't always come back to everything. Sometimes you just end up kind of like, huh, you know, it's, yeah. it's whatever. And you move on. Right. So I need, I'm, we're still building on that. Like I would love to give soul as much time as she would need to process something, but mm -hmm. I need to either get it. I'm sorry, or I need to get something that concludes it. Or I know that it's going to conclude it. Like we're going to get to the bottom I'm of the same. We were just yeah. talking about that this morning, how hard it is for me to be told I need an, I'm sorry for me to do it. Like in my mind, I will say sorry when I feel to say I'm sorry. And he's telling me, like, sometimes you just need to be more, have more grace. And if that's what I need right now, just give it to me. You know? Well, there's a lot of instances where I do that already, where I'm like, if I just carry happens, around a bag of sorry sometimes, you know, like, <laughs> like, here you go, here you go. But, that's, yeah. but they're genuine, though. Like, yeah. there's a lot of times where things happen between her and I, and like, I'll take a moment to think about what she said and like be more receptive to like her feelings and kind of like putting mine to the side and be like, all right, I may not necessarily actually think that I'm in the wrong, but based on what she's saying, yeah, like, okay, I, I get it. That. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, and the, the I'm sorry, but fucking drive me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just keep it at I'm sorry. And then like, let's just move on, you know? Yeah. Are you, how, you how are, are you with very that? similar to that? <laughs> 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 I see Felicia's just like, hmm. 
But mm-hmm. he sometimes says it too soon too. Like you can't just be like, I'm sorry, just to say I'm sorry and like yeah. try to work through it. You have to also like give time to really actually process it. If you just yeah. throw an I'm sorry me sorry at me, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. It's a it's a very powerful word, you know? And so I just you, have a bag of them sometimes. And just, yeah, and then, it, and then it's yeah. annoying. You know what I mean? Then yeah. it's like, okay, now I'm already worked go. up. Yeah. And then yeah. you're going to throw I'm sorry at me. Like, for what? Yeah. What yeah. exactly? Yeah. What are you sorry about? Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. On to the next one. Who have I not asked a question to? Soul? Me. Okay. Everybody else? Okay. So, Soul, how have you evolved or how have we evolved as a couple in terms of priorities and shared goals? And how do you ensure that we stay aligned as a team? This would be really good for you too. So how have we evolved as a couple in terms of priorities? Well, I, I believe now putting our family first, each other first, our time first. Um, how we've evolved... Before I feel like it was like I go to a different question. Your team, my team. Sure. You want to go to a different question, or do you want to? Maybe a different one. Different one. Yeah. I was like, right. if you want us to run with this one, oh yeah, good. no, 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 for sure. Why am I even doing that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. So, um, <laughs> all right. So Felicia, here's a question for you. How have you How have you guys evolved as a couple in terms of priorities and shared goals, and how do you ensure that you stay aligned as a team? So a lot of it, I mean, is being on the same page with our individual goals and then our together goals, which we both talk about quite frequently, I would say. Um, And I think a lot of that has developed with our relationship. So we both quit drinking, right, and focus more on health and more on growing and more on business. And all of that has been something we evolved together. We've done it all together. Everything's talked out. Every step we take, both of us. We talk it out first, whether he's going down one career path or another, we talk about it. I think it's just really being on the same page all the time. And just having open communication without fear of judgment, especially with your spouse. Yeah. Her and I tell each other everything. There's nothing I ever, I ever hold from her, good or bad. Sometimes Sometimes a little too forward. But (laughs) I'd I'd rather (laughs) live my life like that than try to like, have things in the closet or things I'm keeping from my wife or, you know, like he doesn't make a big purchase without me knowing, you know, how like some, some relationships you have where they'll, they'll buy something and they won't tell them about it or, you know what I mean? Like none of we don't have, I find all that that shit really odd, you know? And I like, there's a lot of my wife thing or yeah, Yeah. the permission, the permission thing or even the happy wife, happy life slogan, I think is stupid because in reality, like if you're in line with what you guys are talking about, your whole like your purpose as a man should be to make your wife happy. Like that exactly. should be like what fulfill what genuinely fulfills you as and a man, and not at your disposal either. Right? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't understand how there can be women that are happy at a man slaving away to make them happy without them like helping or assisting or making their life better too. Yeah, being it, a part it works of it. both ways. Yeah. Like yeah. we have to be there to support each other. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I love it. this is going to be good stuff. So, um, and how do you, how do you guys make sure that you stay aligned as a team? Like, do you guys have, do you guys have meetings every month? Do you guys we like talk every day? Yeah. Every day about it. Yeah. Nice. I would say it's not like a scheduled thing, but it's pretty much, we don't really have a line between like work and personal either. It's just, if there's something that comes up or, is is important we talk about it whether that's at night during the day like whenever you know yeah. um i would say like annually probably you know like anyone else around the first of the year we always kind of like hey this is kind of our like this is what we want to accomplish this year um but yeah it's not something that like we schedule and talk about which maybe could actually improve things more yeah um I'd love to learn how you guys started doing this. I feel like this is a strength that we could probably implement into our relationship. Yeah. Like we've talked about it, but yeah, we, we just never seem to actually do it. And then we just in, 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 blah, 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 blah. so in line with that, I think a lot of, com- uh, 
arguments or frustrations in a relationship come from not knowing when you could do exactly what you guys yep. are doing. Mm -hmm. And that, cause I find that that's what happens with you and I, like it's one of us gets over anxious or stressed out about something. And then we finally throw up on the other person and then we figure out where the other person's coming from or where they're going. And we're like, Oh, okay, well that makes sense. You know, whereas yeah. if we just communicated, right. So if you guys have any like tools or advice or anything for hard. that, do you guys do that a weekly date night? We've talked about that and we've haven't stayed consistent with that. No, I so. would. I mean, a Wait. lot of people probably don't, even if they have the date night, a lot of times when, when we go out to dinner or something like that, it's these kind of things that we talk about. It's not necessarily just like hanging out in like this lovey dovey time. A lot of that is just like, Talking about your we're talking goals. about the same things just at a nice restaurant well, not, yeah. and you know, not like, even just going out to dinner like we we do uh <laughs> we watch kill tony every monday that's almost like a yeah, comedy show it's at home we're just chilling on the couch but we're doing it together yeah, yeah. you know like all of that you I guys think, have phone rules no no we tried that that didn't work yeah because of work. We're, we weren't very good at that <laughs> i think I, that's the type of stuff that people need to hear like it's bullshit because i mean it's hard for us to put our phones down too yeah. not that we're distracted i'm still present it's but the line of God. work that we're into as part of it. Yeah. You know, like there are a lot of times when I need to respond to someone at seven at night. Yeah. And she's, you know, she understands that if mm -hmm. like there are days where I work till we go to bed, there's days where she works till we go to bed. It, you know, that's one of the nice things about both of us having a flexible schedule, I guess, is we can be around each other still in that. And like just the presence is enough a lot of times. Yeah. But I, I, I will say, like, if we go out to dinner, like, it's like an intentional date night. Both of us are pretty good about not just, like, just sitting on your phone while you're yeah. at dinner. Oh, yeah, something. we're not, like, on our phones while we're at dinner. Yeah, yeah, but, like, watching TV and stuff, both of us are pretty guilty of, like, sitting next to each other and just scrolling, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> that's, that's probably not the best thing. I get it. I don't even like watching TV, so for me but, to sit down on the couch and actually watch TV is like, yeah, I'm either falling asleep or I'm not even paying attention to what's on the TV. You're doing something, working on your totally. phone or something. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, I'm reading something or or what have you. Yeah, you know. So that's like a constant back and forth between her and I because she enjoys sitting down and watching a, a yep. movie or a show, where I'm like. How how are you even? Li what is going on with this shit? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm super frustrated. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a headache just from hearing these people talk like, on the team. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I love documentaries. Like, I love yeah. finding out how Twitch this guy like ended up being a murderer. Also, something their own. else we did too was uh, during 75 Hard, the outdoor walk. We did those together yeah. and just walking the dog or on a daily basis outside of 75 Hard. Like, those walks mean a lot too because you can talk during those as well. Yeah. That, that one's big, probably like doing cardio together. Yeah. Like especially like outside. Yeah. Just like, I don't know, there's something about walking outside and just talking. Yeah. We have these same conversations. Do you guys have dogs? We have, we one, have one. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that, was we like, need that was like the, and it, it's weird. It just like, that's just kind of what it evolved into is like, that was just the time at night where we kind of decompress and just talk about things. It's very hard to be on your phone while you're walking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and like you, you are a lot more present in that. Huh. I like that. What do you um, think about that? Well, we've done walks, but it's been so cold lately, and I, I, I just hate being cold. I don't like going outside when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like bundled up right now. It's getting a little warmer, so I think we can start it back. You up. talk about how cold it is. Yeah, I did that a few times. <laughs> I, I, I wear like three pairs of pants sometimes. Okay? The whole walk, the whole walk God, is so cold. Yeah. So cold. All right, here's yeah. our next question. So, Soul, when facing challenges. How do you encourage open and honest communication to strengthen your connection? Uh, I'm working on that. <laughs> like I, said, I, I shut down. I literally physically, I cannot speak. I just shut down and it's, it's frustrating for myself too, because I want to talk. I want to communicate, but I, I don't know if it's part of my ego or part of my, this is how I grew up as well. My mom would not talk mm -hmm. to me for days when I was in trouble. You know, so I would have to de rely on my dad to feed me because my mom was so mad she wouldn't talk to me for days. So I think that that comes from that. That's I think it just takes time, too, because it's the same thing for me. It took me a long time. I'm a lot better about it than I ever she used is, to be. Definitely. Um, but like I would just shut down, too. I, I wouldn't talk. I just just leave me alone. Like, I don't even know how to process. And how were your parents? Did you oh, talk? The, no, no, no. But so. 
to what Felicia had mentioned. So I'm very involved with my boys in talking about things like mm-hmm. they have their own mindset journal that they write in that we nice. bought for them from Amazon every night. And so I appreciate what your parents do or had done. It was it was one of the things that my mom definitely I feel like did right was she wouldn't let me just get away with being mad or not understanding why I made her mad. It would, you know, I might get yelled at and I might get blown up on, but there was always a circle back of this is why you pissed me off. Yeah. And really good. that really helped me as a kid, like learn, learn how to communicate, especially when there is like heightened emotions, you know, and like that always, too. that always gave me for what it's worth for like with your kids that always gave me kind of closure as a kid, like, okay, like I, I get it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I get what I did wrong. Yeah. Whereas um, we sit there and we're just like, okay, this person's angry at me. I don't even know how to process it. You know, like that's a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you guys then? Uh, that's huge as a man, bro. Quite honestly, I mean, as a as a a woman, I would have to imagine that like that's a good quality that's in a man helpful, to have, no, like, because sure. you know there are a lot of men that are probably still the opposite. There's a lot of old school ways that are still present in the world that don't need to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. There's nothing wrong with getting angry. No, no, not at all. Especially to a kid, though. Like, if they don't get why. Yeah. You know, like, generally kids just don't understand what they did. And if you can if you can loop back to that and explain to them, like, hey, this is why this was wrong. I don't know. It, it means a lot to a kid. Well, we had, I'll touch on this really quickly. Um, my son just got caught cheating in school. He's nine years old. And my both my boys, very good in school, very good boys. Like, they don't do that. They're good at sports. Mm. They, like, and he had to write a note from his teacher, and he just put it on my desk. Anything that comes from school, they put it on my desk. So he just put it on my desk. He didn't tell me what was up. He didn't say anything on the on the ride home. <laughs> and so I read it, and I'm like, wow, okay. So it's, I think it's important that I probably handle this pretty correctly. And so I called her over and I'm like, what do you suggest that we do? So we disciplined him. The discipline's more in line with like his sports. Mm -hmm. But then I had him call his mom and I'm like, bro, read this to your mom. And he could, he wouldn't. Yep. And he couldn't read it. And that was the first instance where I ran into with my kids where I see what you're talking about. Like, I'm going to have to like coach them in the fact that like, hey, you need to be able to read this take accountability for what it is you know my my parents would make me call the teacher and like apologize and stuff like that or i would i remember several times i would have to write out what i did wrong i think that's like 200 times to let it register yeah you know like and so like but if you don't get it in your head after writing it with a pencil 200 times (laughs) you know what i mean like those those moments suck when you're a kid for but sure. it builds, it definitely builds that accountability in you. Yeah. What I want to instill and I think is important, like with the question is like, it's okay to fuck up, right. you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Like we put, because we're married, it's like all of a sudden we're on this like higher, like uh, level of not being able to be a person and not be able to make mistakes. Like have some grace on your wife, your husband, mm-hmm. understand that they make mistakes, like encourage the mistakes, but just encourage like understanding what they are and move forward. Yep. You yeah. know? So Justin, this one's for you. Have, am I, am I forgetting anybody or have I asked you one? Yet? Why don't you ask you? Okay. You need a question. This is actually, <laughs> this, this would be a great one for me as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh <Perfect. my> God. <laughs> when it comes to setting new boundaries, what strategies have you found effective in maintaining open communication and understanding? Setting boundaries is like probably one of the most important things that you can do in a relationship. So we've been through like, especially through the hard times, like we went through some like a really, really difficult year where I wasn't making money. There was distance between us. And for lack of like a better way of putting it, like she was almost like the man in our relationship. It was it it sucked. Right. But there were certain things that as a man I had these boundaries and I was like, this is it. Don't cross them, Mm -hmm. you know, and setting those is so freaking important and helping your, your other spouse understand why the boundary is there is so freaking important. Cause a lot of times if I set a boundary and soul runs into it 
and I don't explain why it's there, she gets pissed off. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck is this boundary here? You know? So that's, this has been something that's like been really big in our really, in our relationship. So communicating those boundaries, I don't even really know how communicating them like really comes about. I think it's just a matter of knowing your role in your relationship you know, both are equal. I have to like add that because you'll get some trolls that think like, it's not like, you know, I'm a, a chauvinist and like, I think that she sh has a place as a woman. No, no, no. Like, yes, but we I do. have, yeah, for we sure. Do. <laughs> I have a place as a man. I have responsibilities as a man. Those are my boundaries. I will, I will take care of those things. And there's and, a balance. And there's a balance yeah. within that. And so I think that's communicating it is when you start to get off balance of your boundaries that you understand for both one another mm -hmm. and understanding that it's okay for new boundaries to come up because we haven't experienced everything together. So if you set it, then you fucking set it. That's mm -hmm. the boundary. This is why. And we're not going to cross it, okay? <laughs> yeah. Period. The end. Yeah. And those are new to me because I... I don't come from relationships where, where there was any boundaries. So I think healthy, it, healthy boundaries, boundaries. But I, I, I think it's, it goes hand in hand with respect. So the lack of respect that I had for my exes, there was no boundaries, you know? So mm -hmm. here I have so much respect for him and having these boundaries have, you know, almost taught me how to sit my ass down when I need to sit my ass down and just let him either process or, I can't disrespect him in a way. So those have been challenging for me to accept because I, I don't come from that. But it definitely has made our relationship so much better. The lines aren't blurred. No, right. they're no, they're, they're very set. So and I think kind of what you're both touching on is. A, correct me if I'm wrong, but the masculine and feminine energy. Yes. Yep. If if you if, if you can prove to her and show her that you have your roles defined and you know your place in the relationship, she doesn't feel like she has to step up into a lot of those masculine type roles that you are taking care of and that she is sure of that you're doing. That allows her to be comfortable in her role as a woman and just and relax a little bit with, oh my God, I have to handle all of these things. She yeah. knows that you have your family's best interest and that you'll take care of things. Yes, and that's new territory yeah. for me because like he said, when we were going through our year, mm -hmm. I was paying for everything, mm -hmm. both houses, both everything, you know, child support, this and that. So it was so overwhelming for me that I was scared. So yeah. I was not in my feminine at all. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't gentle. I wasn't soft. I was I was a bitch. I because was you have Yeah, you have you have your guard up and you have, you know. It, it goes both ways. Like There's no but, safety. Right. Yeah. I was not you will safe. see, though, a lot of times, I, I forget the statistic, but women that are the breadwinners in a relationship, marriages fail, I think it's like 60% of the time. Yeah. Um, and the only, I don't know why, but the only thing that I can think of in that is that you are constantly in that masculine energy mm -hmm. that you, it is, everything is on you to take yeah. care of this situation. And, I think well, that's not how we were created is very important. Yeah, we you weren't know. created for those. I wasn't created sure. to be a female and, and as a man end, and you weren't created to be a male. That feels end. it feels like you're not like, you know, that things are not right. And like it might only be temporary. But as a man, you know that this is not how it's meant to be. This is not my role. You, you know, I think we naturally want to take care of our families and protect and provide. And if you're not able to do that or you're not the one doing that, the whole dynamic of your relationship can off, shift very quickly. Which affects the nurturing side of the yep. female. Exactly. Yeah. The number one thing I had written down was proof of concept. So when you're in a new relationship also as a man, especially as an entrepreneur, man or woman, you're constantly moving the goalpost. Like mm -hmm. I'm like striving to get to the next level, right? And then I get to the next level and I'm like, okay, cool. Now that I'm here, I can go to the next level, 100%. you know, and where I want to be is like several levels up. Right. So each and every level, there's more at risk, you know, because yeah. that last level, I built a level of comfort for mm -hmm. my wife and for my family. And then it's like, sometimes we have to kind of like push that edge a little bit to get to the next one. Cause it takes more money. It yep. takes more risk. But then once we get up to this highest level, like everybody's going to be good. 
And you don't have that proof of concept. And so for an entire year, I was reaching to get to like just lay the base level for us. And I had no proof of concept for my wife to where mm. she could be like, you know what? I know he's going to do that. And that and takes a lot of trust on her part. A lot. You know? Yeah, a lot. So I can understand how if the dynamic is like the male is out there doing that as a female, you guys need safety. Like that's super important yep. to you guys, security and safety. And in reality, consistency. Yep. And so when you have, when you aren't getting that, that's really tough for you guys, you know? Yeah. It's so. scary. It's not a, it's not a fun place to be in. I don't like it. Well, and when yeah. you're not used to that, it's hard to trust too. To get yeah. that trust. If you if it's something you're not familiar with, you're familiar with the opposite. And now she's got to turn around and trust in you to do these things. That's hard too. Yeah. So what would it, what advice would we give to like new married couples at that stage? You know, because here we are now. We're like yeah. we built that. You know, but not without almost cutting each other's heads off trust and like and getting divorced. Trust and communication. That's all you can do. Yeah. And as much as society's changed, a lot of the roles and values our grandparents lived by are there for a reason yeah um especially if you have kids you know why why wouldn't you want your your wife to be at home with the kids you know of course and i i think our society has somewhat taken that as an excuse for the man to be lazy and to not hustle and try to get that next thing they stay in a job they hate for 20 years that doesn't really make any money And they never really strive to get their wife to that point where if she wants to, she can stay home with the kids or do a job that she likes yeah, and not have to feel like so much weight is on her to provide and to contribute. Right. Um, So she can be more in that nurturing role. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So I want to end with on that topic. I want to end. I want to end with this as well. How important it is for the man we were talking about this this morning. Like, I came out to Las Vegas first. Mm-hmm. I stepped on all the landmines, went to battle, and created a foundation for my wife to come out, and so that it, she didn't have to step on the la- the landmines. Of course, you guys, being entrepreneurial women, are going to step on your own. You have to learn your own process and learn, you know, get in with the right clicks and you know, with every, the whole process. You have to also mm-hmm. experience that. But as a man, I took great pride in being able to come out first and do that, you know? And so as a man, you know, while you're talking about a woman being home, as important as that is, I think that it's also important as a, for a man to empower their woman to be like, hey, do you want to have your own career? Do you want to have your own personal space? Because you yeah. deserve that, and I respect that for you. So how, how, how do we make that balance in there while you're taking care of our kids as well? Because I know that you also want to do that, but let's protect your identity. And so what do you want to do? Right. You know, I think that goes back to communication and values, right? Yeah. Understanding what each other wants in life. I mean, you can't just be fully focused on building a career, right? Like you have to actually talk about every little thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Felicia. Did I ask myself? You asked me that last one. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, asked, okay. I asked you this question. So it's actually uh, her question. Okay. So, right? yeah. Is that right? You're going to read it to me? Yeah. I'll read it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, how do you balance personal space and togetherness in your marriage to ensure a harm- harmonious relationship? So that, that would be a really good question for okay. you to ask Justin or... Oh, I can answer yeah. it. Um, so... So that kind of goes back to like, we do do like everything read, together. Here, read, read the question. Oh, okay. I thought you just read it. So. Okay. <laughs> How do you balance personal space and togetherness in your marriage to ensure harmonious? Harmonious. Harmonious. Okay. See? We'll just um, use the one that you read. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, like, I mean, that goes, we spend a lot of time together. So, like, things like the gym is big for me. Like I work out by myself to work through things personally. That's my aloneness, right? That's where I like gather my thoughts. That's where I think. Um, so I think finding that balance, I have that space, right? I make that space and then we're together all the time. So then I talk to him constantly. I probably drive him crazy sometimes cause I talk a lot. Um, but like, I think it, just finding like those balances are different in each relationship. Everyone's different. Your guys's relationship is going to be different and where you find that personal space, whether that's a hobby, his is cars. 
working on cars. I'm not in the garage when he works on cars. That is his time. (laughs) And like, um, so I think just, it really depends on uniqueness of the relationship. Everybody's hobbies are different. Everybody, like our interests aren't always the same. Um, we have, we have the same values, but our interests aren't the same. Yeah. So that's very important to acknowledge that a ton of time, like apart separately or deliberately really we have different hobbies a yeah bit, but 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 that's important to even have yeah. that two minutes of your own right. personal bubble like you're you you are still your own person you you still are entitled to that as a person mm-hmm. so having the fact that you guys understand like this is i'm sure when justin's doing a thing you're like he's doing a thing like that's his time i'm gonna yeah. let him yeah. be Same with Felicia. Same. I know it's with us as well. Like sometimes we know like that person is in their moment and we're like, we're going to respect that. Cool. You know, I don't need to be a part of that. And I guess that's something like we've had that for so long. I don't really even think about that. Like, I mean, it's not something that we really have to communicate anymore. I don't know. I guess I guess in the beginning it was a little bit, but just knowing knowing each other's interests that are maybe different from your own and that that's their time that they're doing the thing that they like. So that is okay. If you're a new couple and your (laughs) spouse wants their own time, give it to them, allow them to have it, work it into your schedule. That's important. Yeah. They need that period. The end. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Babe, I got this one for you. Okay. Okay. You're up. All right. In what ways do you express love and support <laughs> for your partner based on their individual wants and needs? We talked about that this morning. I'm like, I can't say everything. Sean, he likes physical touch. So just even me scratching him, just even touching him, even if he's sleeping, I know he feels loved. So doing that for him Uh, just little things like making breakfast making him lunch making just making sure that he's taken care of Mm -hmm. even if it's the the smallest thing with the boys or taking them to school those are things that are important to him because I'm not here all the time so when I'm when when I'm gone obviously he's on his own but when I'm here it's the little things that I can do for him that that he feels loved and you know I That's when you really notice that. it when she's gone too. Yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Damn. Yeah, there are a lot of dishes sure. here, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love when she says, "Thanks for that." <laughs> for sure. I'm not, I'm largely the same. Uh, yeah, she does a lot of those same kind of things for me. In that, well, it I is mean, it is important and it doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, you know. That goes into the whole playing the role thing, though. Like that's our nurturing side yeah. that you guys look for. Yeah. It's just a natural instinct. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. yeah. And I like it. I, yeah. I like being in that role. It feels good to do those acts. Yeah, for sure. And I actually had to work on that a lot because when I, the way that I was brought up, like the more I would express my care or my feelings for someone, like a lot of times that would be used against me. So mm-hmm. I would just like not do that. So when Sol and I first got together, she would ask me all these questions and I'd be like, why are you asking me all these questions, you know? And so realizing that like, that's how I needed to express my love to her was like informing her, telling Mm -hmm. her, like taking a moment in the situation to be like, you know what? You look beautiful or understanding like, Hey, you know what? She likes hugs. So she didn't tell me I like hugs. No, she told me a statistic of how many hugs it makes. It takes. You need to, eight hugs a day. Eight hugs a day, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, it is. It's so true. like after she told me that four times, I'm like, you know what? She likes I get hugs. It. She likes <laughs> hugs. So I make a point to like, I'll just go up and give her a hug. He's so like, like, how many have I given you? So yeah, like four, the, five. Yeah. yeah. Or what do we have? Three more. Yeah. So. <laughs> you have to learn your partner. You have to communicate. You have to be so open to like learning this other person mm-hmm. and. I think that's really difficult for some people to get past because they're people we're humans. We're constantly thinking about ourselves, right? What, what's in it for me? What do I get? You know, and to be selfless, every every relationship in your life, it doesn't even necessarily need to be your spouse, your kids, your friends, parents, your friends, like siblings, everybody. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Do you want to ask one? Yes. Justin, I think you should ask these last two as a matter of fact. Everyone, and or? yeah, whoever you if you want to direct it somewhere, Sean and then we can question. go. 
<laughs> he hasn't gotten very many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll do this one for Sean. Can you share any rituals or routines that have helped keep the spark alive in your marriage over time? Yeah, for sure. As a matter of fact. Yeah. So we are. Uh, <laughs> what did you say? He was saying butt plugs. Do not edit that out. <laughs> um, oh so when we're apart, there's uh, I found this app that's like a relationship app, and it it asks random questions like about for, about sex, about everything. Like they're actually really good questions. So we've found like we we participate in that more when we're apart. So we mm. found like that kind of keeps things a little more fresh when we're apart. It sounds like you guys spend like significant time apart. Is it like days? I, I, two weeks. Is it two weeks. I do two weeks in California and two weeks in Vegas. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I'm still building my clientele here. So I go back and work two weeks straight with my oh, clients wow. in California. So like pretty much routine two weeks. Yeah. Wow. It's set. And okay. it's been set. like that for a while, but it was me being from California to Vegas. Right. And so now since we're a little more set here, the process of her moving her business Building your base here. Up here yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, that that is a lot. And yeah. I don't know, I think going through that earlier in your marriage will will build a lot later on. Yeah, I believe you know, so that's, also. That's not easy. Well, it's a, it's yeah. it's forcing us to find these things like apps and yeah. little things that are are keeping things interesting and having to answer these intimate questions being far from mm -hmm. one another, you know, and it's, it actually is, keeps reminding us of how much we don't know about one another. Yeah. Like it stores learning. it and you're like, wow, one okay. out of five, one what? out of five. Okay. Well, like in some ways it's easier doing it that way. Like yeah. not face to face asking some of these. Well, yeah. if you're doing it face you to know. face, then you get like, well, what are you going to say? What are you going right. to say? So here it's like, it's your exactly. like honest feeling of what's going exactly. on, you know? And we have cards, we have card games that I bought, you know, and that we ask each other questions that I actually really like that. I enjoy that. He's been open about it. It's been a while, but yeah, we really, we made, we've made like date nights out of those cards. Yeah. It's With, fun. You're still getting to know yeah. each other, yeah. you know, like even totally. after 10 years, we still talk about things from like childhood and stuff that we didn't know. You yeah. know, I mean, you so can feel like continuously you get, you get a blockage and then you like remember stuff from the past. I'm like, yeah. Oh, this one time. Yeah. Yeah. We've done yeah. that lately. So with that and then the distance, you know, when we do see one another, like things are pretty passionate, you yeah. know, as earlier, I confessed my addiction to buying sex toys. So, you know, like sometimes <laughs> I might have like three new ones and would be like, hey, let's give this, let's figure out what this thing does. <laughs> 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 you first. You first Those are babe. pop rocks? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's so, sprinkle that on. <laughs> yeah. So that's what, yeah. Sorry, girls. <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, Felicia, I'll ask this one to you. What advice do you have for couples seeking to grow together and individually while maintaining a healthy, loving marriage? Well, it uh, goes back to kind of like your hobbies and interests, right? There has to be something that you have separate, but that you also need something that's in common. So like something that me and Justin have in common is we love comedy. So we go to comedy shows, we watch comedy together. Like that is the thing that we have in common, but we both have our individual interests. Mine are um, more like, I would say fitness related. And then um, like I've done some stuff with like the film and like um, industry, right? Those are kind of my hobbies. Whereas he's like cars, cars, cars. cars. I take photos of cars, <laughs> I sell cars, I buy cars, I drive and cars. Like, <laughs> so we have our separate interests, which is great because that's our personal that we can, we can still um, – build ourselves individually, yeah. but then we also have the things that are in common together, which is our values, the way we're going to grow business wise and our lives in general. And then we also have like a hobby of interest, which is like the comedy, which brings us together. I feel like we have something to like really, I mean, I guess enjoy and um, find new things and like develop together as well. Yeah. Yeah. Outro. Outro. Okay. Yeah, cool. You can, you can yeah. Shoot. No, 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 that's good. We don't want to go too long. So um, cool. Well, thank you, Justin and Felicia, for, for coming on today. I hope that uh, this, 
you know, resonates with a lot of different people and to my wife. Thank you, soul. Thank You're you, welcome, babe. babe. This is you. like the third time that you've joined me on my show. And every single time it's it's awesome. So um, to everyone that is maybe just getting married or married or in a committed relationship, I hope this adds some value to understand that like normal people do normal shit and you don't need to get all fancy. You don't need to, you know, listen to all these love doctors who are really kind of like they're almost like giving you the problem. And they're just reiterating it in your mind when you really just kind of need to go to the solution, which all boils down to your communication and your commitment to understanding the other person, genuinely understanding that other person. Like you love that person for a reason. And sometimes you need to remind yourself why you loved that person in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, it takes you back to um, being more patient, you know, listening from an open mindset and listening from a loving mindset rather than being so closed off. Like this person is not your enemy. The person across from you is not your enemy. You know, they're by your side for a reason. So I hope you gain some value from that. And we look forward to uh, seeing you on the next one. Thank you. That wraps up another empowering episode of Louder with Sean P. I want to express my gratitude for joining the conversation. Remember, your voice matters. And together we're creating a symphony of impactful stories. If you enjoyed today's episode, I want to hear from you. Please subscribe, share, leave a review, and let's continue making some noise. Until next time, stay empowered and stay loud.